all these things are happening. We have, again, the wars, rumors of wars, the whole, you know, war in the Middle East. Um, the You know, Pope Francis wanting to do one world religion, uh, mark of the beast, image of the beast. Um, you know, Christian nationalism, the election is going on. Um, you know, the it, it looks like the world is um, in turmoil right now. Not Not like really hard but you know it seems like it's it seems like it's going to get there um natural disasters happening as well and uh, and again like i was saying you know the seventh Adventist church is being shaken from the outside and the inside but i think we need the shaking so that we can we can wake up everybody can wake up um and so yeah uh, so things are happening, prophecies coming to pass, and I believe we need to really watch and pray these days because we never know. You never know what can happen. Um, Image of the Beast is right right there, right around the corner. Uh, Mark of the Beast is right, in, right around the corner, I believe. Um, but if God so graciously gives us more time, hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Because um, we pray probably need it right we're not we're not ready yet there's so many so many of us that are not ready and god is long suffering and he is waiting he's been waiting for us for a long long time let's pray our father in heaven i just want to thank you again father for giving us another opportunity to go live i want to thank you father that we are able to answer these questions and do a, a quick little bible study before mastery monday i just ask father that you may continue to guide us strengthen our faith in you father we know that all these things are coming to pass and um to some people it might be scary but to uh to some of us uh, we know that there is hope and so father please continue to work with us and work through us and continue to give us hope father when uh when we see all these things happening that might be scary to some people um, i just ask father that you take um our mindset of fear and you give us hope, inspiration. Impress upon us now, Father. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So the Bible says that all these things might, must come to pass. Um, wars and rumors of wars. Uh, nation versus nation. Kingdom against kingdom. Um, pestilences and earthquakes and all these things. You know, earthquake, that's climate change. All these things are coming to pass. But the end is, is not yet. It is only the beginning of sorrow. Um, <clears throat> the Bible says also that before anything takes place, before all of these, you know, before all the craziness happens, that there is going to be a union of church and state. Now, we, we can kind of see a little bit of that happening, right? And we've talked about this before. And then after the union of church and state, there's going to be the implementation of the mark of the beast, which is Sunday worship or Sunday, Sunday rest by law. Um, Sunday sacredness by law. And we know that spearheading that would be uh, surprisingly, not the Catholic, not the Catholic Church, although we do receive that inspiration from the Catholic Church. But remember what Mrs. White says, once the, the Protestant, the apostate Protestant churches grasp or clasp hands with Romanism across the Gulf, across the sea, across the, 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 the ocean, um, that's when we see all these things are going to come to pass. <clears throat> Which makes sense because the Bible does say, Okay, someone is playing weird music outside, and I'm not in that mood right now. Revelation 13, it does say, <clears throat> in Revelation 13, <clears throat> oh man. Okay, Revelation 13, starting from verse 11, it says, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon, and he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him. So this second beast, which is America, is going to exercise the power of the first beast, which is Rome, the papacy. Okay, so if it's going to exercise all the power of the first beast, what, what does that mean? Is, is the first beast a persecuting power? Can anybody tell me, is the first beast a persecuting power? Yes. SDA Lu said no. What? 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 <laughs> what happened there? The first beast was a persecuting power. 
the per, the first beast was a persecuting po power. So then, uh, <laughs> um, so, so uh, oh, you're losing your audio. Am I? Am I? Am I still good? Am I? Is are we having technical difficulties again? Okay. So, anyways, the first beast is a persecuting power. The 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 Roman Catholic Church. They were they were and will continue to be a persecuting power. And you guys will see that the first beast is going to revive, and the persecuting power is going to revive again but now this time it says that that here in america the second beast that he exercises all the power of the first beast and if the first beast is a persecuting power then here in america when the image of the beast is formed there is going to be persecution of the saints here in america now watch this in in matthew in matthew 24 let's go to matthew 24 real quick i just want to Ah, uh, we have 10 minutes. Yeah, we have 5 minutes. Okay, Matthew 24. Just real quick, Matthew 24. And verse... Um, I guess we can start from verse 4, when Jesus Christ says, This, take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall de deceive many, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. We, th we see that happening today. Again, Iran versus Israel. Um, see that ye be not troubled. Don't be, don't, don't, don't be troubled. Don't be upset. Uh, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So this is just the beginning of sorrows, it says, right? For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines happening today, pestilences happening today, earthquakes happening today in diverse places. All these things are the beginning of sorrows. Okay, the beginning of sorrows, it says. Then, what does it say? Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. That's persecution. And shall kill you. That's persecution. Now, this happened right back then in 70 AD. Right? 70 AD, This all these things were happening in 70 AD. But it's going to happen again today. Today is going to happen again. There's going to be a persecuting power. Two of them. Uh, the first beast and the second beast. The second beast being America or apostate Protestant churches of America. They're going to be the ones that will be persecuting those. And by the way, um, by the way, let me, let me just, just watch. Just watch. I'm going to show you guys something. John 16 and verse 2. Look what, they, look, look what it says. So we're going to get back to Matthew 24, but John 16 and verse 2, we have one minute. <laughs> John 16 and verse 2, they shall put, who's the they here? Who's the they? Can, can anybody tell me who that they is here? I don't want to show it. Who's that they there? Can anybody tell me? BML, I am not a prophet. I don't call myself a prophet. This is the School for Prophets. By the way, for those of you guys who don't know School for Prophets, there is a School for Prophets started with uh, Samuel back then. And then Elijah was the one that took over. And then Elisha took over. And I believe Obadiah also um, was a teacher in the School for Prophets back then. Back then it's called the School of the Prophets or the Company of the Prophets or the Sons of the Prophets. That's in 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles. Look it up, please. Please look it up. I'm not calling myself a prophet. I am not a prophet. Okay? Or I guess you can say that I'm a... Well, I'm not even going to say that. Okay, anyways. Who is the they here? Who... What it says in John 16, verse 2. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Who is the they here? Anybody know? Thank you, God is judge, <laughs> teacher of prophecy. Amen. Inspiring har harmony says Jewish Jews people. Yeah, I guess. As they lose the church. The church, the church, the church. Okay. So are the they here, are they believers or non-believers? Are they Muslims or Hindus? What are they? The government, okay. False preachers, all right. Non-believers. Sabbath keepers, maybe, 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 maybe non-believers, but, uh, 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 okay. 
Uh, TZ says, where? It's in, in John 16 and verse 2. John 16 and verse 2. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it one more time. John 16 and verse 2. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Okay? They shall put you out of the synagogues. In John 16 and verse 2. Um, I'm going to read verse 1. These things have I spoken unto you that ye should not be offended. And verse 2 says, They shall put you out of the synagogues. Who's the they? Believers. <laughs> Believers. Believers. Watch this. Watch this. People who claim, who profess to be people, the people of God. Look, they shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth what? He doeth who? God service. Those who will put you out of the synagogues, those that will kill you, they, they will think that they are doing God service. So what does that mean? The they here are who? People who proclaim to, to, be, to, to be what? To be followers of who? People who claim to be Christians. People who claim to be followers of Christ. Okay? Now let's go back to Matthew. We're, we're out of time. But let's go back to Matthew 24. Sorry, guys. Matthew 24. We were having technical difficulties earlier. Like always, I don't know what's going on with technology nowadays. I think I'm getting old. It says... <laughs> it's, it says <laughs> that these are the beginning of sorrows, right? The earthquakes, the pestilences, famines, nations shall rise against nations, kingdoms, kingdoms against ki kingdom against kingdom. Um, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. That means all nations. Okay, by the way, in Revelation 13, do we how many groups do we have there? Do we have three, four, five, six, or two? How many groups in Revelation 13? Revelation 14, how many groups? In the end, how many groups are there going to be? How many groups of people? Two, okay? Two groups of people. Those who follow the beast and those who follow God, right? Two groups of people, okay? So the they here, it says that the they here, we, we remember in John 16, the they that is there are those who claim to be Christians. The they here are now all nations, Okay, look what it says. It says, all nations, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. So the all nations are going to be professed Christians or believers of Christ in thought and in deed or in deed. Okay. Now look what it says. And then shall and by the way, are these are, are all of these good news? Are all of these good news? Let's be real. Right? Like we see all these things happening, earthquakes. Is that is that good news? Diverse places. Okay, I guess it, I guess it depends on how you see it. It depends on how you see it. If you're, if you're, a, if you are a, you know, if you are a student of the Bible, you see this as good news. But for the people out there that don't know any better, is this good news to them? Is this good news to them? Earthquakes, pestilences, is that good news to them? To us, it's it's okay because we know we have faith in Christ. But to the to the people in the world. They see all these things happening. That's why when 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 the you, you know when when all these things are coming to pass, climate change and all these things are coming to pass, people are going to look to a, someone to save themselves. People are going to look to some some, and that's why there's going to be a. Uh, remember what Mrs. White says that that those who are Sabbath keepers because they are not keeping Sunday holy, they're going to kill them because they think that they're the ones that are not appeasing God because they're keeping Sabbath instead of Sunday. And so the reason why uh, uh, Sunday keepers are going to kill Sabbath keepers is because they think that they're doing God's service and once they get rid of the Sabbath keepers, that they will be saved. That all these calamities are not going to uh, fall upon them. So to them... These things are not good news. Okay? 
Nation shall rise against nations. That's not good news. Kingdom against kingdom, not good news to them. Famines, not good news. Pestilences, not good news. Earthquakes, not good news. Okay, All these things are the beginning of sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. To us, that's good news because when they put us out of the synagogues and they put, put us in front of magistrates and all these people that are looking at us, we can give a testimony to them about the Sabbath and about, about the, the true gospel, about righteousness by faith. So that's good news to us. But to them, because they see that we are keeping God's commandments, to them it's not good news. To them they see earthquakes, it's not good news. To them they see pestilences, it's not good news. To them they see famines, it's not good news. War is not good news, right? And then it says, And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake, and then shall many be offended, because they think that this is not good news, shall betray one another, and shall hate one another, and many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many, and because iniquity shall abound, and because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold, but he that, in, that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Now watch this, my last point. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world of, uh, for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Okay? It says, and this gospel. Now what gospel? Everybody knows that the gospel is the good news, right? The good news that Jesus Christ died for us so that we don't have to die. Jesus Christ tasted death, like true, real death. Everybody else, every, everybody that's tasted death before have not tasted the death that Jesus Christ has tasted. They've tested, tasted the first death, which you can, you, you can uh, uh, resurrect from. They have not yet taste, tasted the second death. Okay, the good news is that Jesus Christ tasted the second death for us so that we don't have to go through the second death. I mean, not death. The second death. That's the good news, that Jesus Christ saved us from our sins and Jesus Christ saved us from death. That's the good news, is it not? That's the good news. But here it says, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached unto all uh, in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. What, what gospel? What good news? It says, And this good news. What good news in the context? Now we know, again, we're talking about it like... Um, in the in the whole scheme of things, we know that the good news is that Jesus Christ died for us and that well, He uh, took our sins and He bore our sins and He died for us. He tasted death for us so that we don't have to. That's the good news. But in the context here, what is the good news? Now, let me ask you guys something. Now, this is water. Okay? I can say I'm going to taste this water. Hmm. This is good water. <laughs> This is good water. What water am I talking about? Am I talking about the liquid that is over there, that you know, the water that's coming out of the faucet? Am I talking about the tea that's over there? Am I talking about the juice that um, that my my wife had given me earlier? Is that what I'm what, what I'm talking about? But when I say, "Ah, oh, this is good water," hmm, what am I talking about? The water that's outside of this room, or this water? Is this water right? This is the water, the water that I'm talking about. So when, when, when this says, and this gospel, okay, when this says, and this gospel, this good news of the kingdom shall be preached, uh, uh, and this good news shall be uh, of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations, then shall the end come. What gospel? Think of it in the context. Think of it. Let's let, let's think in the context. What gospel is this? What good news is this talking about? <laughs> ah, Shamari says um, the gospel that brings en uh, the end. This gospel, the, the everlasting gospel. Amen. Amen. I do agree. I do agree with that. But again, let's take a look at the context. Now, in the context, now we see, again, we see, um, they shall deliver us uh, to, to kill us, right? They, they, you, we shall be hated of all nations. Uh, there are pestilences, earthquakes, the, uh, in diverse places, famines, kingdom shall rise against kingdom, um, nation against king, uh, nations. Now, uh, in the outside world looking in, in the outside world looking in, this is not good news, right? All these turmoil is coming to pass. We see all these things. 
all these things coming to pass is not good news, right? To, to, the, to, to the people outside, okay? And then watch this. Now look what it says. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the, uh, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached unto, in all the, the, the world for a witness unto all nations. What gospel? What, what is the good news here? What is the good news here? What is the good news? Out of all these things, what is the good news um, from, from just from the context here? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you guys out, okay? So, from the outside looking in, this is not good news. 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 That's not good news. Um, this is not good news. Uh, this is not good news. This is not good news. Uh, uh, this is not good news. What about this? Is this good news? But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Is that good news? Is it good news that he that shall endure unto the end shall be saved? That is that is good news, right? So this, so how do we endure unto the? End? This is okay. What okay? Bible students, we are in Mastery Monday, right? Bible students. What does that mean? What does that entail? Like, how does that look? What, where does that, where does that lead to? Where does that lead to? <laughs> Amen. Christ, our righteousness. Christ, our righteousness. Amen. Christ, our righteousness. Righteousness by faith. Righteousness by faith. The faith that we practice, that we believe that the Word of God is going to do what the Word of God says it's going to do. Jesus Christ, or, or, or the Bible says, the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the author and finisher of our faith. The Bible says in Jude 1 verse 24, and unto him who is able to keep us from falling. Remember what, the, what Revelation 6 says? Who is able to stand? Who is able to stand? Jude 1 24 answers the question, unto God who is able to keep you from falling. That's righteousness by faith. And you know, a lot of people have a problem with this because they're looking at self. They're not looking at Christ, our righteousness, righteousness by faith. And so, this good news, this gospel, the good news that we can endure unto the end, that's good news. That's good news that we can endure unto the end because it says here, uh, he makes it clear, right? He that shall endure unto the end, he makes it. He didn't say that oh, no one can endure until the end. He says he that can, he that shall endure until the end. The same shall be saved. By the way, what is it? What is another word for endure or endurance? What's another word for that? What is another word? Ah, it's six fifteen. Ah, what's another word for endurance? Abide, withstand, persevere, overcome. Patience. Here are the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. That's righteousness by faith. The faith of Jesus is that he, was, he remained faithful even unto the end. He remained obedient even unto the end. Even when he knew he was going to die, he remained obedient. Faithful. Righteousness by faith. So, we see all these things happening today. We see all these things happening today. The, the whole P. Diddy situation. Um, I shouldn't be laughing at that. But it's, you know, the whole P. Diddy situation. This, this, the, the hurricanes and all these things that are happening. That a lot of people are being affected by. A lot of people are, are being affected by these things. Climate change. Um, you know, the, the 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 shaking that's happening in the in the, the Adventist Church. All these things that are happening are just they're they're happening, and we know that there are some scary things that are that are going to happen. But remember, there is hope in Christ. 
It says there that he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Well, if I'm looking at myself, I can't endure unto the end unless, of course, I'm focusing on Christ. Remember, it is Christ that calmed the storm on the boat. When he was on the boat and all his disciples are there and they're like, hey, help us, we perish. And Jesus says, you, what, little you of little faith. And then he calmed the storm. It is Christ. It is Christ that calms the storm. It is Christ who is our hope. Christ is our hope. And so there is hope. We see all these storms happening today. But there is hope. We need to get in the boat with Christ. We need to get in that boat. We need to get in that boat. So that's all I wanted to say today. That's all I wanted to say before Mastery Monday. We're going to start with Mastery Monday soon. Um, let's pray, and then we're going to do a quick intermission, and then we're going to start Mastery Monday. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I just want to thank you, Father, for this quick little study. I thank you, Father, that you um, uh, help me to speed up the process, and I hope, Father, that I didn't speak too uh, fast for the people to um, internalize the words that are coming out of my mouth. I just ask, Father, that you please continue to bless us. Help us, Father. I know that um, it is very important for us to, to have a, a knowledge and an experience of righteousness by faith. Help us, Father. Give us the desire to love you and to keep your commandments. And I hope and pray, Father, that that is the desire of everybody that is in here in this um, live stream right now. Please help us. Help us with our unbelief. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys. We're going to take a quick intermission, and then we're going to start with Mastery Monday. For those of you guys who want to participate with Mastery Monday, what it is, is you guys are going to be, to be able to defend your faith. Today, we are talking about once saved, always saved. We're going to quiz you guys on once saved, always saved. Okay? So we're going to take a quick intermission. For those of you guys who want to join in, please go to sfp.center let me see if i can take you guys there real quick okay go to sfp.center here sfp.center go to swordsmith click on swordsmith once you guys get there you guys can log in if you guys are already members or you guys can just sign up if you guys want to be uh, members you guys can sign up for free or if you guys want to support this ministry you guys can sign up as a paid uh, member um, once you guys get there you guys will go here to the stage okay in the left uh, left hand side there's a menu go to the stage that's where you're going to go and we are going to be defending our faith there and don't worry we're all friends we're all sharpening each other here okay all right so we're going to take a quick intermission and then about a five minute intermission and then we can begin The SFP community is a growing community and it's all thanks to you. And there are three major categories in which you all have helped in some capacity. Number one, media. Our documentaries and videos have led many to the truth, which in turn have led to conversion and baptism. Number two, training. We've been training and teaching individuals and families to become Bible study teachers, preachers, content creators, and medical missionaries. And number three, community. The members of the SFP Swordsmith community have been helping God's people sustain and maintain their relationship with God and cultivating a kingdom-ready, Advent-ready people. Guys, we have reached many, many people with media, training, and with the SFP Swordsmith community. And because we are nearing the end, we need to get ready a people who are eager to see the second advent of Christ. How can we get this thing done? How can you help? There are three ways in which you can get involved, help, and become a partner. Supplication, participation, and donation. Number one, supplication. Your prayers are needed for this ministry to continue to grow, to continue reaching more people and inviting them to the kingdom. Number two, participation. Your contribution and interaction with the people as a member of the Swordsmith community will definitely help in the maintenance of the relationship between God and His people that are within this community. And number three, donation. Your monetary support is very important as it can be a driving force for us to continue doing what we do in the closing work of this earth's 
history. Media production can be very expensive these days, but we have seen many, many people get baptized because your donations have made it possible for them to learn of the truth through the documentaries and videos that you all helped us to produce. Your investment and monetary support can be a huge blessing to many individuals who are searching for truth. If you believe in the Advent message, please think and pray about these things. Probation is fast closing. Let's finish the work together. Become a partner at www.sfp.center. Praise God always. All right, guys. All right, guys. Can you all hear me still? Mic check, mic check. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. Um, just wanted a uh, quick shout out. The people that have uh, donated through PayPal this week. Um, let's see. Okay. Special shout out to Amazing Facts. <laughs> I guess made a. Oh, this is not donation. Um, special shout out to Rogelio, John Perkins, Marlon, um, Matthew Groover. Lucinda, Stephen Newton, uh, Daniel M. Davis, LaShawn Manns, Savannah. Thank you, Sister Savannah. William. Thank you, um, Brother William. Um, and Loretta. Thank you guys for uh, donating this week. I really appreciate it. Um, we in the ministry, we, we really appreciate the donations. Um, for those of you guys who want to support this ministry, again, go to sfp.center support, and you guys can donate there. Now, 